Let's be honest, there's no guidebook when it comes to relationships. So we end up having to stumble through life trying to figure things out for ourselves. What if there was a podcast that found the answers for you, that provided insight to build a successful relationship and ultimately find the companionship you've always hoped for? Welcome to the Girls Ask Guys show, where we answer the questions most people are afraid to ask when it comes to lessons in life and love. It's time to master this thing called life together with your hosts, John and Ashley. And welcome back, all of you gagsters. Hey, today we have a very special episode for you because we are talking about online dating. Myself and Ashley, we really don't do a whole lot of online dating, but we do have a guest who has used online dating successfully. And he is here to give us a few little tips that you can use to make your online dating just a little bit easier. And we want to welcome Greg, who also has a podcast called Suburban Folk, which covers a lot of topics, including a little bit of finance, some Star Wars topics. He is also a triathlete. So if you're looking for some tips there as far as how to prepare for triathlons and things like that, he is the place to go. And for all of you parents out there, because Greg, as we said, he has used online dating to the point where he actually met his wife through online dating. So with that, we want to welcome Greg, who can be found at Suburban Folk Podcast. Hey, hey, John and Ashley. Thanks for having me on. Oh, not a problem. Can you give us a little bit of a rundown on what uh, Suburban Folk is about before we jump into this whole online dating thing that we're about to talk about? I try to house it as things that people living in suburbia are dealing with in their daily life. So the the main four categories are health and fitness. Um, So, you know, dieting. um, I actually am an endurance athlete by background. So like triathlons, things like that, but also covering just gym regimens. Um, And then uh, personal finance is a big one that we cover because in my opinion uh a lot of folks could really use uh some some tips and tricks there to you know fund for their retirements and and savings and so on um and then my opinion also is uh be as uh resourceful as you can with your money and everything except travel um travel as much as you possibly can so we have a focus on um travel both what we're doing as well as you know ideas from other people that are like we just finished an episode with uh travel agency um and then, uh, did I say parenting? I don't think I said that one yet. And again, for, for a lot of us out in suburbia, yeah. we, like I said, we, we are those children. ones, uh, yeah, <laughs> annoying, annoying the single folk with our kids running around, uh, <laughs> in, in restaurants and so on. And so each show try to bring on folks that are experts in their area, um, about an hour long show to give some tips and tricks. Try to also do it from the standpoint of somebody that's never, been a part of the particular topic. So we really try to spell things out so that uh, if it's something you're interested in, like a triathlon, um, then you'd at least get enough information that you can go out and um, figure out if it's something that you'd want to be able to do and get more information. So that that's that's what we're trying to do. Um, and uh, again, help solve problems for, for folks that are out there. And then like you mentioned, we're going to have some um, house like DIY renovation episodes coming and then for fun yes we do uh big entertainment things i think i'd like to think yeah. star wars is something that uh nearly everybody at least has some familiarity with so we try to keep it like the real yeah. big stuff that somebody has at least some frame of reference yeah, for man. just for fun yeah excellent synopsis there yeah go check out greg at suburbanfolk.com or look up his podcast on any of the major platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. So let's dive into our topic of online dating. So we ran into Greg just a little while ago, and he comes at us with a very interesting story. Now, me and Ashley, we've talked about dating and everything, but not a whole lot about online dating. But Greg actually used online dating, and it was successful yeah, for and, him. and I was a late bloomer in the world of relationships, I have to say. Maybe the way I can preface my podcast with what you guys are doing, and we even talked about this, is we're all about solving yeah. problems for people. And hey, if people can learn from our mistakes, yeah. then that's terrific. Maybe they won't have to go through some of the same, yeah. in this case, heartache. And for me, leading up to doing online dating, I was... If I can be critical of myself, I was a little too 
vain <laughs> and interested in just <laughs> what my potential girlfriends were looking like rather than personality and what other matches would go on there. And then I think I also would discount, you know, people that were very interested in me, but if I would get fixated <laughs> on somebody else or, or somebody that was maybe, um, harder to, harder to get, um, then I wouldn't even consider, you know, any other matches at the that time. And what that did for me is once I got out of college, I sort of didn't know what the next steps were in the world of dating. And I'd be interested if you guys would agree the, after school world of dating versus being in school and being around your peers oh on a regular God. basis, night and day, right? <laughs> oh, uh, <my> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Cause, go yeah, because even when I was in the military, um, I'm constantly in that world. So meeting somebody was like almost instantaneous. But once you leave that small If I knew microcosm, dating was going to be this hard after high school, I would have married the person I was dating in high school. <laughs> Not even joking. It is it is insane how difficult it is to date. Um, number one, you're an adult, so you have to manage your life. But also then you have to like, it's not like high school or college where you see people, you know what I mean? Like you can go to parties. You have to actively try and be social. Um, and it's just, it's quite frankly, it's exhausting. And like I said, if I knew yeah. what I knew before, it, there's no way I would not have married my high school. Sweetheart. It's just dating is just exhausting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so... For any of my friends that didn't find the person they married after college, that's where most of our interesting dating stories oh, start yeah. to come up. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we all have them, right? Um, for, for Oh, yeah. It'll probably take me 10 years of podcasting <laughs> to actually get through all of my yes, stories. John, we all get it. You're a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so for me, at least anyway, after a number of those experiences, I finally took a look at online dating. And this was, I would say, fairly early on when people weren't sure if they even wanted to say that they were on these yeah, sites. Like, so it was that probably was like... Embarrassing. Mm -hmm. So like oh oh six oh seven time frame, but again for those that have gone through meeting people in the bar and sort of the crapshoot that is that whole mm. scene, it logically makes a whole lot of sense if you can find people that are being very truthful, let's say with um, what they're looking for <laughs> and what their appearance is and, and so on and so forth. It at least is a first filtering mechanism for right. whether or not you're going to be a match with somebody. Yeah, because I I think I tried all different kinds of profiles <laughs> when when I was when I tried it. I mean, there was actually I actually did one, and it got me a it got me a good response. Uh, this sounds misogynistic. White male in a white car heading westbound on I ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I don't know who you were advertising to. But it doesn't sound like she uh, was a I safe just wanted bet. something different than everybody else. And I got <laughs> like a tiger? huge amount of response oh back. <laughs> well, well you know, that might bring me to what my tip number one would be is I don't know if the same dating sites are out there when I was on any, but just like many things in life, you get what you pay for. Um, and so yeah. one that I remember was called Plenty of Fish. No oh, idea if it's still God. out there. <laughs> I have and... horror stories about Plenty of Fish. I almost got kidnapped, I swear to God. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and so it's a free service, at least it was. And it's still free. again, it yeah, still so is. if people are using this, like, for example, Craigslist finally just shut down their oh, whole God. thing, right? <laughs> Yeah. And, it was it, <laughs> and so because, again, you get what you pay for. These people are just on there. They don't have any financial stake <laughs> in the game, which, you know, indicates their seriousness as far as where they're at in dating. So that would be one thing I would encourage folks to consider when you're deciding what to use, where to use and so on. Um That you can definitely get some interesting folks that way when you're doing one of these free services. Uh, yeah. And, and the next thing I would say is, like I said, if for the profiles themselves, hopefully people are being truthful uh, so that you can accurately filter who matches what you're looking for. It, but that goes both ways, right? So for myself, I'm not a yeah. real tall guy. I'm like five foot eight. 
And hey, there's going to be girls profiles out there that say, if you're not at least three, four inches taller than me. Yeah. I want to wear heels and you're out. All right, fine. At least I know that, right? And, and so, yeah. you know, in that case, just making sure you're using your time wisely as well as not wasting somebody else's time. It, it, sure. Maybe at one time I might have tried to say I was five, nine or five, 10, but guess what? When you meet in person, which is ultimately what you're trying to right, do. Five, five and shit. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. like, well, that, where that, are you? Right. <laughs> and, and of course, goes without saying those doctored up photos and all that stuff oh, is going to. No, that doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I can't with online dating. That's why I don't do it. Because it's like, you're right, there is a filtering process, but it seems like people are either way too honest or they're just full out lying. Like yeah. they'll post a picture of themselves yeah. 10 years ago yeah, and be like, oh no, that's recent. And you, and so you go to meet yeah. them and you're like, this is not like you. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Uh, uh, where's Brad why Pitt? Are you not, yeah. Oh my gosh. Or, or the people who don't even show their face, which I'm not mm-hmm. going to meet someone whose face I can't see. You know, sure. their profile picture is a meme. And I'm like, okay, that is funny, but. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to yeah. do a little bit more than that. And like, like I said in my intro of admittedly in my younger years, I was a little too superficial than I should mm-hmm. have been. However, <laughs> let's just right. be honest. Everybody finds different things attractive, but again, they've got to have something to actually judge on. So there needs to be a picture that is a valid representation of who they're going to meet for every Shrek. There's a Fiona guys. Just remember that. (laughs) Oh, it needs to be on a shirt. It's wonderful. (laughs) Fiona in both versions. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. Exactly. Um, and it all depends on your perspective. And the next thing that, again, I don't know if this has changed since my experience, (laughs) but as far as intros are concerned, they used to have these, you know, wave buttons or smile buttons or whatever. And I think this is probably more of a guy tip than it would be a girl tip. Like, that's probably not going to get you very far. I mean, again, you're trying to stand out and actually show that you are more interested in just, hey, I liked your picture. You got to take a few minutes at least to read what they say they're into. You know, maybe there's a movie that you've seen that you can comment on. Maybe there's something that shows that you didn't just use it like, what is it, Tinder and, you know, swipe left, swipe right. Um, Otherwise, there's plenty of other people that are doing the same thing. So you got to take a little bit of work there too, I think, to make sure that you're actually going to get a response or at least increase right. the likelihood that you're going to get a response. Don't. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. like when he says that he means like a, an actual thought out response, not just a <laughs> picture of your genitals, because you'd be surprised how disgusting most women find your body when they're not asking to see it. Oh, back on our Tinder episode, the topic was, is Tinder proof how know shallow women are <laughs> pretty much the gist of that was, <laughs> It goes both right. ways. Oh, yeah. But one of the girls that I was going out with at the time was on Tinder, and she was sitting over in the passenger seat, and she's just, like, scrolling through and scrolling through and just, I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm deleting all of these. And I was... That's kind of rude. Well, no, I mean, she her <laughs> Tinder account, she had so many matches with people and so many people trying to contact her. She couldn't keep up with it. I mean, she literally had over a thousand people and she's just like, I just need to filter it. I, I can't answer all don't, these. I don't. Yeah, she ended <laughs> yeah. up just deleting her account. If someone's ignoring you for more than three days online, just kind of write it off. I mean, like, and that's nothing personal either. Just like John said, sometimes people just get busy. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and it also shows you literally in front of your face that there are plenty of fish in the sea um you know right. when you're scrolling yeah. through now john like you mentioned depends on the side of the town you're in whether or not it's it may be more viable in some places than other but literally yeah don't take yeah. it personally if you don't get a response back even if you've done the right thing that i'm saying actually read what somebody's interested in and have a thoughtful response that right isn't a We'll just leave it at revealing picture <laughs> for the for the guys. Really? Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and uh and, and yeah, and you know yeah, it's amazing how many pictures she had in there. I mean, was, <laughs> I mean these. Guys, <laughs> I was like, what in the you know world? What's weird? I mean, she actually had a, she had a rating system. I can guarantee you, almost <laughs> every and and I don't care if this is a stereotype. Most guys have a have a half naked picture of their genitals ready to go in just about any given situation. 
I don't know what it is about the male form that makes them think that everyone wants to see them naked. But if you, if I bet you, if you asked one of your male friends for, an, well, he'd probably be like, "Well, bro, chill." But like in context, <laughs> one of them has one. I'm telling you, like one every three. I don't know what it is with guys and showing their penises, but it's very weird and it's very gross. You guys should all stop it. I don't know. I don't want to be recognized that way. <laughs> oh my god! Could you imagine, like, John? <laughs> yeah, get. We're going to have a lineup yeah. here. Oh, shit. Yeah, that'd be terrible, dude. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I actually have a story yeah. kind of going the other way. So um, one of the sites that I did try for a time was eHarmony. And, you know, their whole pitch is that they do all the matching for you. You have to right. match on certain criteria until you can even communicate with a person. So going back to what I was saying, kind of get what you pay yeah. for. You assume everybody there is sort of ready for more long-term commitment, that kind of thing. And so one of the girls that I was communicating with once we exchanged emails, um, she sent her own set of pictures um, unsolicited. Ah, nice. And I was super extra innocent. I even sent her a note back and said, did your account get hacked? Like, what's oh, going on here? So <laughs> so I was trying to be oh as nice as I possibly could. She sort of went with it. I'm sure probably because I embarrassed her. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we skipped a couple yeah. steps. <laughs> I don't even know what your favorite color is. <laughs> Unreal. But, but for what it's worth, yeah, I, I actually sort of flipped the script on the stereotype. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah, girls, I guess, yeah, you're right. Girls are probably ready and able. I don't know. Maybe it's just because we're all from the old older schools of life where, uh, right. like, you don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah, the internet well, that... is forever, you know? <laughs> like, uh, yes. I mean, if, if anything to take from, from this part of the conversation, it's that, that it, it's not really a good idea. Um, there are apps for that. And again, eHarmony is not really one of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, there, there's whole sites, for, there's whole Mingle websites for that. This is where <laughs> I go for my news. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so at this point, I think the whole different websites, there are so many different versions of it that if you are that specific, um, in what you're looking for, yeah, go, go find one of those first. Otherwise, you're going to probably get extra frustrated because everybody else is not on the same page. <laughs> right. Some people actually want meaningful relationships. Right. And that's, I think that's one of the things, and you could probably agree with me since you've apparently been on like all of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that like, it's very hard. People aren't very honest about what they want. They kind of just want attention. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that yeah. in a lot of online, a lot of online dating is it seems like people want attention. And then once you give them the right amount of attention they desire, then they just kind of like peace. Yeah. Well, that, that's, <laughs> Yeah, that's the whole handcuff yeah. season. Uh, yeah, and I, I, maybe that's just also illustrating more of what face-to-face -face interactions are of um, you want what you can't have, and then once you right. can get it, you sort of move on to the next thing. It's it's showing itself online. Yeah, it's kind of like the dog who caught right. the truck. He's like, okay, I caught the truck. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> the chase it's, is over. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and then there's there's no more to, to get from there um but uh but yeah well i like to say as far as my experience with all the, the couple of sites i did my research at least <laughs> before <laughs> yeah. picking one yeah. so uh I, I tried to be very very analytical in which service was going to have sort of the best amount of um reasonable people on it <laughs> before put paying for money one way or the other so maybe that's another tip is like i don't know if people go and you know sign up for a bunch of different ones and pay money for them or not but you know try to figure out as much as you can um again going back to the small town thing like see yeah. which one has the most participation um and, and hopefully go with that so that hey it increases your percentages of actually finding somebody that that you match up with um yeah because the place that i live uh, I think we're just now cresting about 63,000 people. You would think there's plenty of people. On, uh, not really. <laughs> now, if I lived in Houston or I moved a little bit further north or I went over to New Orleans what? or... New Orleans Tinder is popping, dude. I can tell you that for <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I just don't want to live below sea level. Right. <laughs> <laughs> on the coast below sea level. Yeah, when you got a couple hundred thousand people, yeah, it's rather easy. Because right? <laughs> I know that when I went to Houston, yeah, my Tinder account just like blew the oh, hell yeah, up. Man. Like, Whoa. But still, 
It was Tinder. Right. <laughs> um, Fucking assault with that one, dude. Tinder is basically yeah. just what I imagine. Somebody somewhere was like, you know what I want to do? I want to just sleep with a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it was made for colleges. I, oh, yeah, I, so yeah, I, I delved into the history of Tinder and how it, how they created it and how it came about. They followed how Facebook became popular. It was built for colleges. Well, do that too. Follow how Facebook became popular. Well, in, in Tinder, <laughs> the idea of Tinder is not even that new. Like in my day, no. you know, back in, in high school, there was Hot or Not was the name of a website that <laughs> yeah. you could put your picture on and people would rate. And I think they tried oh, yeah, to turn that into too. a dating service. But it was just nudes. Like, yeah. like it was just how girls got their nudes leaked. So <laughs> they shut it down. I swear to God. That, like, it was like a rating website. Hotter, like, uh, it was kind of like that. Only it just ended up being revenge porn. And, oh, like, oh, it boy. was just bad. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, you're right. It's not a new idea. Especially not the concept of a one-night stand. That's as old as, you know, time. But, I mean, it's just the way yeah. that it's structured that just, to me, it's so icky. It's I've never so been good. on it, so yeah. I I don't know. I can't comment. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I I actually, I tried it only be only because another guy recommended I it, and I was like, eh, okay, and yeah, and then they surprise charged me for an entire year, and I was like, no, <laughs> it's too late. Right? <laughs> oh, you have to pay for it. I didn't know you had to pay no, for it. I oh, it's one hundred seventy bucks. No, no, no. yeah, it's one hundred seventy dollars. The the um the STD version is free. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's the one I went with. No, um, but yeah, seriously, it's 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 pretty. It's like any dating site, you know. It's free to do a couple things, but then if you mm. want to um, really get disgusting with someone, yeah, if you actually want to talk right, to somebody, it's, it's one hundred seventy bucks. Insane, because that's a lot of money to pay for strangers. Yeah, but I guess well, you'd you know pay what? like the same for bars and stuff. For drinks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. Well, and and you know maybe that's a good segue for what my other tip would be. Like you said if you want to talk to somebody, I think when you go through, whether it's online or whether it's face to face, like eventually you sort of want to just cut to the chase. Um, right. You know, a date or two. Sure. You know, don't tell somebody your complete life story. And if you have any skeletons in your closet, you know, sort of lay them all out there. But again, in the interest of not wasting anybody's time, um, you know, you, you want to see what their goals are, see where, where they're trying to be relationship, professionally otherwise and so on and just you know speak frankly of whether or not it's a match and again translating that to the dating world or i'm sorry the online dating world um, don't trade you know 10 messages before figuring out a place to go and have coffee like have a quick message um you know hopefully you've had enough of a connection there of your you yeah and like the same movies or like whatever it happens to be same activities plan a phone call plan a place to go meet for a quick coffee and just go do it. Um, you know, don't waste a bunch of time right. in the online forum. And I think onla- like yeah. online dating is really good for people who like to stall um, because mm-hmm. it's easy to say, oh, I fell asleep or um, I didn't get that message. I have no service or the myriad of other re- lies that people will tell. And so it's hard to sort of make that transition, at least for for what I've noticed is that it seems like for people who want people online who want to date so badly, everyone's always busy with something. <laughs> and I think, and I also think that's why we rush so much. Like I've noticed after 25, everybody's trying to get married all the time. <laughs> like constantly <laughs> just what everybody's wants to get married. The first questions are like, so what are your goals? I can't even, I'm not even going to waste my time talking to you if your goals don't align with mine. And I'm like, damn, I don't even know your name. <laughs> but like, here are my goals because I'm not trying to waste my time either. <laughs> it's so yeah, yeah, yeah. It can get pretty uh, intense uh, right around that age. I think you're right. Probably like the mid to late twenties. Um, yeah. I'll even say the the bar scene sort of flips a little bit. Whereas it, maybe it was the guys only that were, um, you know, being aggressive. Uh, I felt like it was around that time frame that. Hey, it was the guys and girls that right. if they oh, saw somebody that's... they were interested in. They were going to come up and you know see what happens. Hey, I think you're cute, and and it's brazen too. Yeah, yeah. You know, every now and then, I I still do go out to clubs, and I have a certain way that I enter clubs. I walk in like I own the place. I'm just waving at everybody and shaking hands. And do hey, you know how you the doing? people that you're shaking hands with? That's the question. I have no okay. idea. <laughs> that's what I wanted to know because that's boss as fuck. If you don't know anybody and you're just walking in like yo, 
well, what up? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, how's it going? Uh, you, you're taking right? care of like, I mean, it's a fucking but, mobster, dude. Like, <laughs> but no, it, it's a technique that I learned, and nobody's talking to each other, so nobody knows who I am. They're just like, who is this guy that knows everybody? So everybody now know, wants to know me. It's like, that's fucking insane, it's like man. That's, that's insane. <laughs> like, what's weird is people shake your hand back. That's the weird part to me. Like, who is? If you see John, no, no, you can actually try, try it. it of uh, just walk up to somebody and stick your hand out, and then watch what they do. Ninety nine percent of the time, they're going to shake your hand back, and then they're going to spend the rest of the time trying to figure out how you know them or how they know you. Yeah, I've not been in. I'm happy to say I've not been in a dance club or anything like that. And gosh seven, eight years maybe. And, uh, you know, I, I'm definitely the type of person that seems like the craft beer places are um, catering to. Like, you know, anymore you go to these places and they've got, you know, kids like swings and slides. Right. And, you know, these <laughs> like, hang out. That, that's my version of going out. <laughs> it's just yeah. uh, t- yeah. taking the family, <laughs> yeah, getting a flight of beer and, uh, you know, home by nine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You, you, you parenting, you parent people are the envy or like the bane of my existence because, uh, <laughs> your kids just feel the need to go everywhere with you. Uh, oh, yeah. Neglect builds character. Yeah. I just thought you should know that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's right. If they don't have like a big warehouse where the kids can just sort of like run free range, then it's usually like not the place for Connect us. Four. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and seriously, at least in my area, it is. It's the craft breweries that have, yep. yeah, like those giant, yeah, like you said, Connect Four or like Checkers the, or or the or go, Cornhole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. That's me. That's my yeah. scene now. That's your kids. <laughs> your kids. I'm, they're going down next time. Just so you know. <laughs> um, well, the, and I, at least from my experience, to sort of uh, you know wrap it all up for when I was again, able to get out of the bar scene and so on. It just so happened that like the last person that I was uh, communicating with was my wife. And, you know, I'd like to make it easy and say, well, that's because we connected and, uh, you know, that was it. I, I didn't need to, you know, review anything else. But literally, we would both say we were like the last people <laughs> on our profile <laughs> uh, because again it, where we met was actually a pretty small town as well so um you know there, there wasn't a huge um pool there but uh right. yeah, the best part you know sort of bringing the things together of priorities and you know being on the same page i remember i think it was our second date um we went ice skating and you know it was going well so we said okay do we want to do dinner and i was um getting my masters at the time and i said well i got you know some homework that i've got to finish up and she me was like yes absolutely you do i can go and you know like get food and and get that ready to go but basically don't call me back until you're done with you know your your uh, responsibilities um that's which sweet. is like okay that's perfect <laughs> you know that uh yeah. um, got her head on straight she's saying the right things and then the other that i always you know will say is when we first interacted i think our first phone call was like three hours um yeah. so you know it's kind of those things that don't make for very exciting stories but you know really check the box for like whether or not um, you're on yeah. the same page and you know can communicate that way and you know for, for me it was history from there right i mean yeah. very few well, like super aggressive great meet cutes and in a wonderful relationship they usually end in like custody battles yeah. it's, it's it's that progressive you know that progressive love over time that really is what makes things last and it's it's not you know we i you know in the first week we got married because i just felt that they were just like my soulmate it was we really got to know each other and we started to just completely fall in love and usually it's like and to this day we're still in love you know, like, it's like that. Yeah. And it's wonderful. And I think it's adorable. And I'm super yeah. happy for you. Yeah. yeah. And just for the audience, I don't have anything against online dating I do. or dating apps. Uh, because, I mean, it does open the pool up because I can't be everywhere at once. But online, you can meet like 15 people that you would have otherwise never yeah, met. Yeah, that's what I would say is I am definitely not one that ever really liked the bar scene or dance scene. And again, going back to once you're out of school and, you know, dating people at work is more and more becoming taboo. Let's just be honest um, for yeah. a, a bunch of different reasons. Uh, it does make it hard to 
find people in your daily life, especially if you are, you know, any kind of introvert. So I think that's the way to use it as a tool. To, to your guys' point, don't use it as, you know, a, a game or a crutch right. for face-to-face yeah. interaction. Um, but it can be used, I think, as a tool so that you're not having to suffer through, at least I would say, suffer through the bar scene. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and, but also, again, that you're not sort of mixing um, your personal time and your work time if, uh, if that doesn't work either. So the question is, I guess, when it comes to online dating, and you are pretty much a professional. I mean, you've 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 done Match, you've done eHarmony. You've, have you done OkCupid? No, I know what it is or of it. Wonderful, you should do OK. Well, no, you're married. Well, I don't. Think, yeah, I would get in a lot of trouble if I did that. Yeah, now. never mind. That's actually Madison, actually, because you're married. I'm sorry. Oh God. Um, <laughs> but um, I think the question is, which one? Not which one did you like your wife? Or did you meet your wife on? But which one do you think? was the most comprehensive when it came to dating? I think that if you trust your process and take the tips that we've been talking about here, for me, Match was the easiest. Um, At the time, I don't know if this is still the case, it had the most participation. Um, So just a lot more people in the network, if you will. Mm. Um, versus, like I said, the way eHarmony has their setup is there, you know, you do this whole profile and questionnaire, and then you have to go through these other set of guided match, um, questions that right. you, like they'll match you up and then, um, you still have to click these buttons before you get to like free typing. And once you're on there for a while, again, the same things we're saying, you just want to sort of click the button so you get to writing the email of, Hey, do you want to go grab coffee or, you know, whatever that happens to be a match, you know, is more straightforward than that. Um, but has at least enough filtering again in the way of the tiers, um, for what you pay. I don't remember at all what the cost tiers were then versus what they are now, but again, oh, it just cuts expensive. through some of that. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Wasn't that, I don't remember it being that it bad is. at the like time. 30 bucks a month. 30 bucks a month's a lot, man, when you're in your mid 20s. Sure. Um, and, and actually my, my main comparison of those two is, um, I think my wife had a, like a free profile or something on eHarmony. It, it, it did actually never matched us up. <laughs> um, so again, just going back to like, if you trust your process for those social skills and, you know, making sure you're getting out there and so on, then I would say that's probably the way to go. Um, and again, at least they do have those tiers. Yeah. It's a little bit expensive, but it, gets rid of some of those nightmare scenarios that we're right. just talking about for uh, the free services. Oh, actually, we're coming up on yeah. our I time here. It. Yeah. Well, Greg, it has been yeah. wonderful as always. Um, and by always, I mean the second time we've talked to you. It has been <laughs> wonderful. Um, is there any other thing you want to leave us with? Before we get you out of here, uh, just you know, contact information again. If folks do want to come over and take a listen yeah. to uh, my show, the website is suburbanfolk.com, um, and pretty much the same thing for all of the social media handles. Um, Twitter is at suburbanfolk, Instagram is at suburbanfolk. Um, pretty sure it's the same thing on Facebook, facebook.com slash suburbanfolk. So pretty easy to find us. And, uh, we're on all of the major podcasting platforms. So you can get us on Apple, Stitcher, yeah. Google Play, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, Podbean, um, so on and so forth. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're over on, um, Spotify, Spotify as yes, well. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, yeah, you just, uh, yeah, you just type, I mean, actually, you can just go to Google and say, hey, Google, play, uh, Suburban Folk Podcast and it will start right up. It, it, yeah, yeah, with the, yeah. with the service that has come out, which is pretty cool. So you're right. I've, I've tested some of those and it should come right on for, for folks. And again, you know, that's what the website is there for. We recognize we do a lot of different topics. I would encourage you folks to, you know, step outside of what your current interests are and uh, take a listen to a couple other episodes. Like I said, we try to frame it for newbies to any of the topics, but uh, if you really just want to get to a couple things on the website, they're all categorized um, appropriately so that you can find what you're looking for. Right on. Yeah. All right, man. Well, it was great talking to you as always guys tune in. Greg, like I said, you're awesome, man. Thank God you finally found your wife. I don't know how much longer you could have afforded online dating, to be completely honest. Um, but we're super happy for you, and we'd love to have you on again sometime. Yeah, that sounds great. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate yeah. it. Oh, no. Thank you, Greg. We'd really do appreciate coming on. And, hey, 
Everybody, go out there and give Greg some support. Go ahead and listen to the Suburban Folk Podcast, because you never know. There just might be something out there that we don't cover that he actually has more expertise on than we do. So until next time, we thank you for listening. That's all for this episode of the Girls Ask Guys Show, where all of us learn to master this thing called life together. For more answers to your questions on life and love, be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss a single episode. And head to girlsaskguysshow.com to submit your questions for a future episode or apply to be a guest on the show. Good luck out there, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Girls Ask Guys Show. 